Welcome back friends, thanks for being here. Buckle up and subscribe because it's going to be fun. Today is the last installment of this QRP Guys DSB transceiver kit for FT8. We're going to do the final testing procedures, apply some power, and get some signals out. So first thing we need is a power supply. This thing doesn't really draw a whole lot of power, so even one of these little guys will work just fine. This puts out 12 volts DC at 200 milliamps. It's gonna be perfect. Let's get that plugged in. So we have our board right where we left it. I did take those chips back out because the first step in the testing procedure is to not have the DSB transceiver chip in and not have the amplifier chip in. So no chips, no daughter boards. I put a dummy load on just to uh, belts and suspenders kind of thing. First thing they want you to do is to apply power to the board. So I have power lead that we just discussed. Get these guys connected together and plug it in. And we get a green light, so that works. And it says verify nine volts between pins eight and four of U2. So power meter between pins eight and four. So pin four and pin eight. And we have 9.02, that's good enough. So the way these uh, sockets are numbered for counting pins is you have the notch up here. This is pin one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So between pin four is this last pin over here and pin eight is this last pin over there. Nine volts, good to go. Remove the power. We remove the power and we install the DSB chip into U1 and we install the amplifier chip, which is an LM358 into U2. Good to go on them. And then they want you to connect your voltmeter in series. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out um, which side is the positive side and which side is the not so positive side. So I have separated out my power leads and this is a center positive deal. So the first thing we wanna do is Put the tester into continuity mode. Verify that it's in continuity mode. Put that into the center. All right, center positive, good. So the next thing that we need to do is connect it up in series. And we're trying to measure the current draw, the amperage on this guy. Plug that in there. And plug that in there. So I have an alligator clip connecting the positive lead from the power supply to the red lead on my multimeter. And I take another clip lead, hook that up to the negative side of the meter and to the other side of that flying wire that we separated before. So power goes from the wall to this alligator clip lead to the positive part of the multimeter. And then it comes out the other side of the multimeter and goes to the other part of that wire and carries it on forward. So that's what they mean by in series. And I just lost one of my connections. Gravity's fun. Hook that back up. Take the V1 bias trimmer fully clockwise. So get out a little screwdriver. V1 is this one right here next to the big relay and it says fully clockwise. So there we go. Apply power to the board. So we've got our green light and on the multimeter we are showing 13.43. Change the jumper pin right here to Jump that on, the red light goes on. We are now transmitting into our dummy load. Note the amount of current that the board is drawing. We're at 52.1, 51.4, we'll go with 51 something. Slowly adjust the V1 trimmer counterclockwise and watch the current meter and you're looking for a 15 milliamp change. So 51 plus 15 is gonna be 66. We wanna turn this one counterclockwise until we get to about 66. There's 71, let's back it back down a bit. And it's a very sensitive control. 69, 66.7, good enough to go. Remove power, remove the shorting pin, and I just pull it off two and put it onto one to park it, and it doesn't stay. Let's put it back on. All right, we are now ready for some testing. So I'm gonna get this thing all configured and plugged into the laptop. I am running a MacBook Pro as my machine. So I need a fancy cable adapter because Apple doesn't like to put connectors on machines. So this is a cheap little cable adapter that I got off of Amazon that allows you to plug in your microphone lead and your uh, headphone lead into the single jack. So we'll get that all set up and we will do the next couple of things. 
All right, these things are single frequency, except for when you change the daughter board, then it changes to a different single frequency. So inside of your WSJTX program, there's no such thing as rig control, so we disable all of those features. And then uh, plugged in the audio cables, hooked it up to the computer audio sound card that already exists. This will be different on every machine that you have. In my case, like I said, I'm running a MacBook Pro and I'm actually running Linux on it. So it shows up as an ALSA input for the input and an ALSA output for the output. Pretty straightforward on my end. Uh, when I run my ICOM 7300, it shows up as a Burr Brown input and a Burr Brown output. So you put input on input and output on output and you're good to go there. Um, click the uh, tune button on the WSJTX screen and then you want to turn this trimmer here until the red light comes on solid and you are good to go. Turn the tune button back off and you should start, see, start to see signals on the waterfall and start to see signals get out. So let's uh, migrate over to the screen capture and take a look at what those guys look like. Okay, so here is a screenshot of some signals that we have received. Uh, a couple of different signals from PJ, uh, FM, and KF stations. So we can certainly hear with it on 30 meters. So that's a good positive sign. And then let's take a look at another image. And here is a uh, screenshot of pskreporter.info, fantastic website for verifying if your signals are getting out and seeing how far they transmit out. So for a little transmitter, um, this thing did a pretty darn good job of getting out to the whole wide world, even people that were asleep over in Europe and Russia and Japan. Uh, I guess people in Japan were just getting up, so maybe they have it easy. So my thoughts on this kit, uh, there's a couple of videos out there, a couple of other builders out there who have talked about missing parts. I did not have any missing parts. I think the board layout was pretty good. I think the schematic is pretty good. I think that uh, the price point is pretty good. Uh, it was a pretty easy board to put together. Didn't really run into any technical difficulties. Didn't have any problems with it. Um, just kind of put it together and go. So it was fun to do. Um, there is some controversy about this thing being a dual sideband transceiver. And I think that the QRP guys were trying to find a price point. And honestly, I think that the price point works and the DSB works because I don't know that anybody's going to be using this thing as a full-time radio trying to get worked all grid, grid squares on FT8. Um, what else can you do with this thing after you get it built? There is a connector for an external VFO, so you could possibly change frequencies on it. I have seen people uh, change the rocks, change the crystals out from the... Uh, FT8 frequencies that are on here over to crystals that are in the JS8 region of the band. Um, so I know that definitely works because that's also using the same protocol as FT8. So I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. Um, and then lastly, uh, it probably could run on FT4. I mean, this thing basically receives audio signals from your computer and returns audio signals to your computer. Um, so it's protocol independent. It really is just bound by whatever crystal you put it on or if you install an external VFO. So highly recommended that you get one and try it and play with it and uh, enjoy exploring your radio. I will see you on the air. Thanks for watching and look forward to whatever project I come up with next.